Hello and welcome to the YouTube video on whole numbers. This is part of the Functional Skills Maths course at level 1 and level 2. The learning outcomes for this particular video are to be able to read, write, order and compare large numbers. At level 1 we expect you to be able to do this up to 1 million and at level 2 to be able to carry out these tasks for any number. We can trace numbers and writing of numbers back to 3000 before the Common Era or BC as it used to be known. The Egyptians used to have the hieroglyphics that used to be able to represent pictures with numbers. Something more akin to the way we use numbers these days were the Greeks around 500 BCE. Here you can see clearly that they're using digits for the numbers that we recognize today. If you notice, both systems use groups of 10. Do you have any idea why we use groups of 10 when we count? It's the obvious. It's because we have 10 fingers on our hands. Both these systems are missing something that is quite obvious that is very useful in the modern way we count. Can you spot what it is? Neither system uses a zero. And a zero is a very important thing in the modern system because we use it as what we call a placeholder. And we'll look at that in some detail over the next few slides. Our number system uses characters that have become familiar in our day-to-day -day lives. So from zero 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, we can use and represent any number that we're given. And we have an order for our numbers. We place 0 at the start, then 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And sometimes, when we were younger, this was referred to as the number line, with the larger numbers being further to the right on our number line. So, for example, 13 is larger than 8 because it's further to the right on our number line. Let's look at some common patterns that we can spot on our number line and you should be familiar with. We use the terminology buzzword to refresh you in the future of words that are important in maths. So, for example, the buzzword on this is the word even. This is a word and a definition that will be very useful to you, whether you're at level 1 or level 2. So, let's look at the even numbers and the definition. Even numbers are numbers that are divisible by 2 and leave no remainder. So, our first even number is the number 2. And then 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. So if you look at the pattern we're spotting here, anything that ends in an even number, either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, will be even. And it allows us to spot even numbers, even when they're very large. For example, I know the number 3,624 is even because it ends in a 4.
Here's another pattern we need to recognize, and that's odd numbers. Again, it's a buzzword that we need to know the definition of. So the definition of an odd number is a number that leaves a remainder when divided by 2. So the first odd number is the number 1, then 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. So you can form these patterns or identify them quickly by looking at the last number of any number and that will tell you that a number is odd, even if it's very large. So 3467 is odd because it ends in a 7. Our next number pattern that we need to be aware of, and a buzzword for our collection, is the word multiple or multiples. Multiples multiply, so in theory it's your times table. So if you start with the number 4, then it's going to be 8, 12, 16 and so on. So your multiples are your times tables. So the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and so on. The next word we need to know the definition of is a factor. and a factor that is a number that divides exactly into another number. So if we look at 18, the factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. So if we look at the factors for 18, We have 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. And if you notice, I've put them down in pairs, because these are the two numbers that when you multiply them together, give you 18. So the factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. You have a go and try and write down the factors of 36. Don't forget, you can pause this YouTube video at any time and give these problems a go yourself. So if we do it logically, we have 1 and 36. I know that 2 goes into 36 because it's even and it goes in 18 times. 3 goes into 36, 12 times, and 4 goes into 36, 9 times. 5 doesn't go into 36, but I know 6 goes into 36, 6 times. And now that I've got to 6 over on this side, I can stop. So the factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, which we've already got, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Notice how I do the pairing as well. And did you get them all as well? Our next definition is a square number. And a square number is the result of a number being multiplied by itself. If we square 4, and in maths it's written with this little number here called an index, 4 squared means 4 times 4. So it's the number being multiplied by itself. So 4 times 4 is 16. Now this is the thing you need to remember. 16 is the square number. 4 is the number being squared, 
16 is the square number. So 16 is a square number. The final definition we need to know is a prime number, and this is mainly for those doing level 2. A prime number is only divisible by 1 and itself, but not including the number 1. So when we look at our number line, our first prime number is 2. Then it's going to be 3. Now we can't have any more even numbers because they're all divisible by 2. So then it's 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. So these are the prime numbers between 0 and 20. So these numbers are only divisible by 1 and themselves. Now, let's look at place values and these groups of 10 that we count with. We should, all, <clears throat> we should all be familiar with the way we group numbers. So we start on the right hand side with units or ones, then tens, hundreds, then we go into thousands. So it's 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, then groups of millions and billions. At level one, you'll be expected to know and understand numbers with seven figures. So when we look at a number on here, seven figures is a number like three million. Now, from before, do you notice how important these zeros are? They're holding this three in place to make it three million. So all these zeros here are what we call placeholders. So zero is a very important number as a placeholder. So for level two, you need to understand that six with nine zeros is six billion. Talking about numbers and place values, as children we were brought up with these toys called an abacus. Now in some eastern countries they're still used, and the reason for that is they are quite powerful calculators. So my question to you is, what is the biggest number that you can set on an abacus? Well, if we turn the abacus on its side and call the first rod the units and then the next one along tens, hundreds and thousands and so on, then the biggest number we can set on this toy is 9,999,999,999. In other words, one short of 10 billion. So it's an incredibly powerful calculator. One of the tasks you'll be required to do during your exam is to read numbers and convert them from words into numbers. So here's one for you to have a go at. So in words we have 136,412. So 136,000 412. You could also be asked to write numbers from numbers into words. So here we have a number and I'd like to for you to have a go at writing it in words.
So in words, it is 3048. Now notice the spelling of the 40. A lot of people spell it F-O-U-R-T-Y, which is incorrect. 40 is F-O-R-T-Y, and it's a common question they ask in exams to try and trick you and check how you spell the word 40. So now we have our number and our number line, and as we talked about earlier, the further to the right we go, the bigger the number. It allows us to compare numbers and values. So earlier on in the video, I said to you 13 was greater than 8 because it's further to the right on our number line. So this system allows us to compare values. Now when you have larger values to compare, you need to start with the largest units. So start on the left of each number and compare them. So they're both 30,000 and they both got the 2, so they both got a 2,000. Now this number here has a 300 while this number has a 100. So the number on the left is larger than the number on the right. And in mathematics we have a symbol that represents larger than or greater than. And we use this right pointing arrow. So 32,358 is greater than 32,146. If, as before, we had our numbers 8 and 13, and we were writing it, then 13 is greater than 8. So you can write it that way round, where the greater side is the bigger number. The greater side is the bigger number. But if you're reading it from left to right, then 8 is less than 13. So we have these two symbols that represent greater than or less than, depending on which way you read them. Here's a little exercise for you to have a go at. So sometimes people remember greater than and less than as crocodile mouths, where greater than is the big end or the open mouth of the crocodile, and less than is the small end of the crocodile. So the crocodile always bites the bigger end. And don't forget, we also have our equal sign that all of you should be well familiar with. Have a go at putting in the correct symbols between the numbers in the grids below. Don't forget to pause the video to give yourself time to do this before I reveal the answers. So how many did you get right? Hopefully you got all of them right. So one of the things you could be asked to do within a task is to order whole numbers, and they particular large numbers, for example, crowds at a football match or the size of mortgages. And there are two words they use for this. One is ascending and the other is descending. And a lot of people get these confused. Now, if you remember, descending is going down, then ascending must be going up. So descending goes down, ascending the numbers go up. So if I ask you to organize these numbers we have here on the screen in ascending order, you would start with the smallest number and then go to the largest number as the last number. Let's give that a go as an activity. So we're looking for the smallest number. So start with the threes, the tens of thousands, so they've all got 30,000. But this has got 31,000, where all of the others have got 32. So don't forget, we're arranging these in ascending order. So we want the order to go up. So we've started with the smallest. So the next smallest, they've all got 32,000. Now we need to look at the hundreds. And the smallest hundred we've got is 32,300. So that's the next number. 
Then we have 2 with 400, so we need to find out the next smallest number. So we've got 404 and 406. So the 404 is the next smallest number. Then the next number is 32,406, leaving 32,854 as our largest number. So we've organised our numbers in ascending order. In other words, starting with the smallest and going to the biggest. When we have very large numbers, we can actually abbreviate them using their group header. So for the brown number here, we can actually edit the abbreviation and put a decimal point at the end of the millions group. So this could be written as 2.3 million. For level 2, if you had a large number like 5,470,000,000, Again, you could put a decimal point at the end of the group of billions and make it 5.47 billion. So be aware of these abbreviated large numbers. So where do we come across these large numbers? Well, you come across them almost everywhere in day-to-day -day life. If you've been watching the series of the planets recently on television, you'll understand that they use extremely large numbers when talking about the distances between the planets. If you're talking about populations in countries or on the Earth, then again, you're talking about millions and billions of people. Some of the numbers we see now, based on the wealth of companies or individuals, also takes us into very large numbers, into billions and millions. And finally, if you're monitoring the number of likes you have or views on YouTube, then again, you can be talking about millions or billions of views. So large numbers are all around us in day-to-day -day life and we need to understand them. Let's play a game of guess the number. This is based on some of the definitions you've been given so far to narrow down the number we're looking for. Our first clue is I am less than 10. So remember our symbology for less than 10. So the numbers we're looking at must be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 or 1. Our next clue is that I am even. So if we remove all the odd numbers from our list, we're left with our number could be 2, 4, 6 or 8. Our next clue is that our number is a multiple of 3. Remembering Multiples are your times tables, so 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on. So the only number that we can see on our remaining list that is a multiple of 3 is the number 6. So I can guess at this point that our number is 6. So to confirm this, let's have a look at our last clue, which says I am a factor of 30. So is 6 a factor of 30? In other words, does 6 divide exactly into 30? Yes, it does. It goes in 5 times. So this confirms that the number we're looking for is 6. Let's have a look at some exam questions based on what we've covered so far. So have a go at these two questions and come up with your answer and then I'll give you the big reveal. So write the digits for 32,000. So the number 32,000 is 32 with three zeros after it, the placeholders. 
The second question, write the digits 403,720. So 403,720. How did you get on? One more at practicing writing these numbers down. So write the number 807,000, so 807,205, 205 in figures. The next question is an example of a multiple choice question in the exam. And we need to find the list that is decreasing in order from the largest to the smallest. Have a go and see which one you think it is. So we need to go from large to small. So for A, 252,080 to 252,300 is going up and not decreasing. So we can discount A. 252,080 to 250,900 is decreasing, or based on our thousands. 250,000 going up to 252,000 mean it's going up again. So this is going in the wrong order. So we can discount B. 252,300 to 252,080 is decreasing. And 252,080 decreases going to 250,900. So I believe the correct answer is C. But let's just check D to make sure. 252,300 goes down to 250,900. But again, we go up from 250,000 to 252,000, so it cannot be D. So the correct answer you should come up with is C. Let's just have a quick recap on some of the buzzwords that we covered during this lesson. So do you remember the definitions of even, odd, multiple, factor, a square number, a prime number, greater than and less than? Let's have a look. So even numbers are divisible by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. Even if it's a large number, we can tell if it's odd or even based on the last number. So this number I've just written down is even because it ends in a 4. An odd number has a remainder if it's divided by 2. So odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. And we know an odd number because it will always end in one of those digits. So if we just put a 7 on the end of the number we had before, then this number, 642,547, is odd because it ends with a 7. Multiples multiply. So don't forget, it's your times tables, 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. And factors are numbers that go into other numbers. So, as before, 6 is a factor of 30 because it divides into it exactly 5 times. A square number is the result of a number being multiplied by itself. So, 4 times 4 is 16. So, 16 is our square number. And we'll cover square numbers later on in the course. Prime numbers are very special numbers that are only divisible by one and themselves, but not including the number 1. So 2 is our first prime number, then 3, 5, 7, and so on. We learnt two very important symbols today. That's greater than symbol, or the crocodile's mouth is at the large end of our numbers. So here we have 6 is greater than 2. And the less than symbol which is, again, the reverse crocodile's head, 
where the large end of the crocodile's mouth is at the larger number, so 5 is less than 9. And that concludes our learning outcomes for reading, writing, ordering and comparing large numbers, both at level 1 and level 2. And don't forget, additional practice is available on these topics on Moodle.